solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. And in a way, what's beautiful that you shared here, David, and you also talk about that in the book, is somebody, ideally both, at least one of them needs to take onus to drive the process of repair and restoration and rejuvenation of the relationship, right? At some level, there's also an element of uh, taking ownership for that process, you know, whatever the outcome might be. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, hopefully both start to take some ownership. It may take one person to initiate, but interpersonal problems almost always have an interpersonal component. Each of us brings something to the issue. Mm. And I've got to be willing to own my part, but I need you to own your part. And part of the conversation, the messiness might be my saying, I'm not hearing you take any responsibility for this. You're, it's sounding as if you think it's all my fault. And that's hard for me because I don't think it is all my fault. I'll, I'll mm. own my part, but I don't have you own yours. So I think both have to take, one may take the initiative to start, but both have to take at least some responsibility. Mm. Likewise, if it's a relationship both are committed to, both ought to feel some responsibility to make sure that things are okay at the end. Hmm. And, um, and it may be that they aren't quite okay at the end of this meeting and we need to come back to it. So hmm. it's always useful after a difficult conversation, the next day to come back and say, Hey, where are you with that conversation? Hmm. Are you okay? The other person's likely to say, well, as a matter of fact, and you still have a little bit more work to do. Hmm. And a related corollary to that, I guess, David, is, you know, uh, this was a term used by one of my guests on the show who runs the half, uh, Halftime Institute, a gentleman called Lloyd Reeb. And he uses the term, you need to have a, mass, a side margin in your life. You know, if you fill the page and you don't have space, uh, then, you know, you don't, you don't have the opportunity to to create the space for some of these conversations. Um, can, can you say a little bit about uh, creating the space for us to be able to address some of these things that, uh, that emerge as we go through life? There's a phrase uh, called organization problem solving. We didn't have time to do it right the first time, but we had time to clean up all the mistakes about doing it right. Hmm. Um, the scarce resource in organization, I fact, the scarce resource in life, I think is time. Mm. It's, it's not money. It's not people. It's not resources. It's time. That's a scarce resource. And the question is, how do we spend our time? And I think we spend our time, a lot of our time in the secondary issues, mm. not the primary ones. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm, I make a to-do list. And when you say secondary can, and primary, sorry, David, uh, just for me to understand, how do you distinguish the two? Uh, the primary are the really important issues, the mm. major issues. Mm. And the secondary are the ones that would be nice to clean up, mm. but aren't crucial. And there are relatively few really, really important issues, I think. Well, if I can stay focused on the really, really important issues, then maybe I can find some time, some space for these important, which I think is crucial, these mm. relational issues. Because organizations are held together not by the organization chart, but by relationships. Mm. And if every member of an organization said, who are the key people 
I need in order to get my job done. And I'm going to pay attention to building those strong relationships. We'd be much more efficient and much more effective.